Hello my dear students, in this lecture we are going to see methods to improve efficiency of Rankine cycle. Basically there are two types of methods that is one is the reheat and other is practical regeneration cycle. Now my dear students, before understanding of this topic, here my assumption is that already you are familiar with Rankine cycle and already you have seen my previous lectures. At least lecture number one, lecture number two are important, right? And after that only, here my assumption is that you are, you came here to understand this topic. So my dear students, without wasting time on understanding of what is what is the meaning of Rankine cycle, let us understand the methods to improve the efficiency of Rankine cycle. Now very first method is reheat cycle. Very first method to improve the efficiency is reheat cycle, right? Reheat cycle. Now my dear students, reheat cycle is nothing but in reheat cycle, expansion is done in two stages with an intermediate reheater. So that we can say expansion, expansion in two stages, two stages. And there is an intermediate reheater used to heat the these gases, right? Now let us understand the Rankine cycle. Here you will be having boiler, right? Here in Rankine gas cycle, there is a boiler to supply heat. In this boiler heat is supplied so that the water is converted into steam now this steam is circulated now exit of boiler let us say condition 1 this exit is condition 1 now this steam passes through the turbine right at boiler pressure which is very high this boiler pressure is very high therefore boiler is a constant pressure process that already we know right let us say this is a turbine 1 and this is a high pressure turbine where work 1 turbine work is produced work 1 turbine is produced Therefore, this is a high pressure turbine, high pressure turbine, where steam expands reversible adiabatically from 1 to 2, where steam expands reversible adiabatically from 1 to 2 and this high pressure turbine produces work is equal to work of turbine 1. Now, after that, after the expansion from turbine 1, now this here exhaust of turbine is given to the boiler again for reheating. Therefore, there will be an intermediate reheater here this red color is intermediate reheater therefore my dear students from 2 to 3 day from from 2 to 3 there is a intermediate reheater here you can say this is a reheater reheater again reheater is nothing but heat exchanger which operates at constant pressure therefore again at constant pressure again this turbine exhaust is heated means again heat is supplied right let us write down the processes here 1 to 2 1 to 2 is reversible adiabatic reversible adiabatic expansion reversible adiabatic expansion in high pressure turbine in high pressure turbine here it is high pressure turbine not a low pressure turbine so write down here high pressure turbine in high pressure turbine right now my dear students high pressure turbine now the second process 2 to 3 is reheater and this 2 to 3 reheater is nothing but heat exchanger and heat exchanger is a constant pressure process therefore 2 to 3 is nothing but constant pressure heat supply in reheater we are supplying heat constant pressure heat supply in reheater in reheater right this is a 2 to 3 process now after reheating again this steam is given to the low pressure turbine there will be an expansion in again other turbine that is low pressure turbine let us say this is a turbine 2 turbine 2 where this turbine produces work of turbine 2 right and expands from 3 to 4 therefore we can say 3 to 4 is reversible adiabatic expansion turbine is always reversible adiabatic reversible adiabatic expansion in low pressure turbine in low pressure turbine therefore this turbine is low pressure turbine operating at lesser pressure right now where p2 is equal to p3 and p1 is more than p2 because here there is an expansion during expansion pressure is dropped from p1 to p2 now once the expansion is done in high, low pressure turbine then heat is rejected in condenser therefore we are using here condenser there will be a condenser where in condenser at constant pressure heat is rejected right from 3 to 4 to 5 sorry therefore 4 to 5 is condenser where heat is rejected at constant pressure therefore constant pressure heat rejection we can say constant pressure heat rejection in condenser in condenser it is a condenser device right now from 5 to 6 again at the end of condenser the condition is saturated liquid state 
therefore the purpose of condenser is to convert convert this steam into saturated liquid state and to handle liquid we have pumps therefore to again to circulate this condensate or to circulate this water to the boiler we have to use pump so that the pump will increase pressure to the back to the boiler pressure therefore there will be a pump from 5 to 6 here 5 to 6 is a pump right therefore we can say 5 to 6 is pumping when pump is reversible adiabatic process reversible adiabatic pumping right that is isentropic pumping now again 6 to 1 is heat supplied in the boiler and boiler is a constant pressure process here as this boiler is constant pressure process therefore we can say 6 to 1 is constant pressure heat supply in boiler constant pressure heat supply in boiler now let us understand these various processes on temperature versus entropy diagram here there are total six processes so here we will draw temperature versus entropy diagram for this now my dear students here i am minimizing so that we will get sufficient space for drawing temperature versus entropy diagram now if I draw temperature versus entropy diagram, in temperature versus entropy diagram, temperature is taken on y axis and entropy is taken on x axis. Now here, there will be a liquid vapor dome. There will be a liquid vapor dome. Now very first process is reversible adiabatic expansion in turbine 1. Therefore, it is isentropic expansion. Therefore, let us say here 1 to 2 is reversible adiabatic expansion in high pressure turbine. Now 2 to 3 is constant pressure heat supply in reheater. Therefore, 2 to 3 is constant pressure heat supply in reheater. Right. Now, 3 to 4 is again low pressure turbine expansion. Therefore, 3 to 4 there will be expansion in low pressure turbine. Now, 4 to 1 is at constant pressure heat is rejected from the condenser. And in liquid vapor dome, the constant pressure and constant temperature lines are same. Right. Because during phase change, the temperature as well as pressure remains constant. Therefore, 4 to 5 is constant pressure heat rejection in condenser. Now, 5 to 6. It is pumping, therefore pump compresses the fluid that is pressure increases because of this compression pressure increases from 5 to we can say 6, right. And 6 to 1 is again constant pressure heat supply in boiler, right. Therefore 6 to 1 is constant pressure heat supply in boiler. This will be the process 6 to 1, constant pressure heat supply in boiler. Now my dear students, here this total cycle that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is with reheater here reheater is used and reheater is from here 2 to 3 we can say it is a reheater and there are two turbines right that is turbine 1 is 1 to 2 and turbine 2 is 3 to 4 therefore with reheater work of turbine work of turbine is work of turbine 1 that is h1 minus h2 plus work of turbine 2 that is h3 minus h4 therefore work of turbine is h1 minus h2 plus s3 minus h4 this is the work of turbine now without reheater if reheater is not used, then in high pressure turbine only there will be expansion from 2 to 1 to 2 dash. This will be high pressure turbine expansion. Now can you say here, we are getting extra area for the cycle. This blue color hatching area is the extra area obtained from the cycle. Right. Therefore, because of this extra area, area enclosed by the diagram is network. As area of the diagram is increasing, network is increasing. Right. And old, old turbine was without reheater re turbine was 1 to 2 dash hence now here pump in both cases what is the pump 5 to 6 is a pump therefore we can say work of pump in both cases is 6 minus h5 which is nothing but constant with reheater as well as without reheater the work of pump is same constant right therefore network network which is increasing because area is increasing is nothing but work of turbine minus work of pump right here pump work is constant and network is increasing therefore we can say the turbine work is increasing therefore my dear students in this case the work of turbine is increasing right now here here 4 to 5 is condenser now without reheater condenser is 2 dash to 5 and with with reheater condenser is 4 to 5 therefore area under 4 to 5 is more for as compared to area under 2 dash to 5 for a condenser therefore we can say condenser load that is heat of condenser that is heat rejected from the condenser is equal to h4 minus h5 is increasing because previously it was h2 minus h5 right now pump work is constant now let us understand heat supply now my dear students in old condition the heat supply was 6 to 1 in boiler which is nothing but h1 minus h6 this is the without reheater 
without reiter this is the heat supply but because of reiter 2 to 3 is also heat supply is increasing therefore plus s3 minus s2 this heat supply is also increasing therefore heat supply is in this case increasing and network network is not now my dear students is nothing but work of turbine minus work of pump this network is increasing it is also called heat supply minus heat rejected therefore this difference is also increasing heat supply is increasing heat rejected is increasing as well as difference of them is also increasing and my dear students the efficiency thermal of any cycle is nothing but network divided by heat supply now here both network is increasing as well as heat supply is increasing but my dear students in this case here increase in work is more as compared to increase in heat supply as numerator is increasing with large value as compared to denominator therefore efficiency of cycle is also increasing in this case efficiency of cycle is also increasing now let us observe quality at turbine exit quality at turbine exit is nothing but drain inspection now without a reheater the quality at turbine exit is at 2 dash right and with reheater quality is at 4 right and here this line this line is dry saturated vapor state where dry inspection is equal to 1 on this line dry inspection is equal to 1 right and here 4 is close to 1 therefore x4 we can say x4 is more than x2 dash therefore quality at turbine exit is increasing now my dear students we know that as the w net is increasing the steam rate which is specific steam consumption steam rate is specific steam consumption is 3600 by w net as network is increasing here network is in denominator to the steam rate therefore steam rate is decreasing and again heat rate heat rate is nothing but 3600 by efficient thermal and here as efficient thermal is increasing as this efficiency is in denominator this heat rate is also decreasing so my dear students we can say in case of reheat cycle the efficiency of cycle is always increasing but my dear students in breton cycle we have seen because of reheat in case of breton cycle efficiency is decreasing but reheat with regeneration in case of breton cycle that is gas turbine cycle efficiency was increasing but only reheat efficiency was decreasing for, for breton cycle but my dear students for rankine cycle with reheat only efficiency is increasing now the second method of improving the thermal efficiency of rankine cycle is practical regeneration rankine cycle now here the meaning of regeneration already we know that in breton cycle we have seen this regeneration regeneration means it is a heat recovery process regeneration is nothing but heat recovery process and my dear students in case of practical regeneration cycle there are feed water heaters are used now the feed water heaters are used are two three four or more than this right as number of feed water heater increases the efficiency goes on increasing and when this Feed, number of feed water heaters becomes infinite the efficiency of rankine cycle becomes equal to carnot efficiency so let us understand this practical regenerative rankine cycle now here there is a boiler to convert uh, water into steam here boiler is used to convert water into steam here in case of boiler heat is supplied now once the steam is generated let us say m kg steam is generated here right at inlet let us say this is the one condition m kg steam is generated to the inlet of turbine now there is a turbine let us say this is a turbine right where expansion will be done in this turbine the expansion will be done now my dear students here i am using three feed water heaters we can use any number of feed water heaters i am using three feed water heaters right for this case to understand this uh, practical regenerative cycle three feed water heaters we are using right now my dear students in case of feed water heater the mass of this steam circulating through the turbine is extracted for process heating now let us understand how it is extracted now here m kg of mass is given to the turbine inlet now from this m kg m1 kg mass is extracted for process heating in feed water heater 1 let us say m1 kg of mass is extracted in feed water heater 1 here this is the feed water heater 1 where m1 kg out of total mass is extracted for process heating right therefore the remaining mass is now the remaining mass is m minus m1 therefore this m minus m1 mass is again further expanded in turbine now again from this m minus m1 mass again i will extract m2 mass at different pressure now again m2 mass is extracted m2 kg mass 
M2 in kg mass is extracted in feed water heater 2. This is the second feed water heater for process heating. That means again initially M was the inlet mass to the turbine. Now M1 mass is extracted at some pressure. Therefore again here let us say condition 2 at the inlet to the feed water heater 1 condition 2. Now from 2 to 3 m minus m1 mass is again expanded in turbine and at 3 again m2 mass is extracted in feed water heater 2 for process heating. Now therefore if m2 is extracted from m minus m1 then the remaining mass again the remaining mass is m minus m1 minus m2. Now this remaining mass is given to the feed water heater 3. Here this remaining mass is given to the feed water 3. Let us say this is the feed water 3. Now therefore the exit of turbine is 4. Right. Now my dear students here there is an expansion in turbine from m kg. m kg is expanded till pressure P2 and at pressure P2 the m1 mass is extracted in feed, feed water heater 1. Therefore from pressure P2 to pressure P3 m minus m1 mass is expanded in turbine. Now again at pressure P3 m2 mass is extracted in feed water heater 2. Therefore, from pressure P2, P3 to P4, from pressure P3 to P4, M minus M1 minus M2 mass is expanded in turbine. Right. Now, therefore, here the exit of field water heater 3 is 4. Let us say the exit of field water heater 3 is 5, sorry, because 4 is inlet to the field water heater 3. Now, again at the exit, the pump is used to circulate this, the pump is now used to circulate this exhaust from the field water heater 3 to again field water 2 again it is given back to the field water heater 2 therefore there will be a pump 1 let us say this is a pump 1 p1 where the exit of pump will be 6 right exit of pump will be 6 now this pump is handling mass of m minus m1 minus m2 right this pump pump p1 is handling mass m1 m minus m1 minus m2 from process 5 to 6 now this 6 is again given to the inlet of field water heater 2 Therefore, this 6 condition is again given in field water heater 2. Therefore, in field water heater 2, initially mass was M, M2, then again M minus M1 minus M2 is coming. Therefore, again to the exit of this field water heater 2, the mass will be M minus M1 because M minus M1 minus M2 is coming and M2 is coming. Therefore, addition of these two will be M minus M1, right? And this is the 7 condition. This will be the 7 condition. And here again I am pumping this 7 condition with the help of pump 2. So my dear students in this pump 2 what will be the mass? M minus M1. Because here from here M minus M1 minus M2 is coming and from here M2 is coming. Again the exit of this pump is 8. Exit of this pump is 8. Now this 8 condition is again given to the field water heater 1. Right. Now from this field water heater 1 again the total mass that is M minus M1 plus M1 is coming out. Right. The total mass is coming out here and this total mass is again given to the pump 3. Here pump 3 will be there. Right. And from pump 3 it is given back to the boiler. Therefore exit of inlet of pump 3. Here inlet of pump 3 will be 8 because sorry 9 it is 8 then it will be 9. Inlet of pump 3 will be 9 we can say. Right. Therefore it is 9 and exit of pump 3 is 10. Right. And again from 10 to 1 heat is supplied in boiler. Now my dear students here we can say at pressure P2 M1 mass is extracted for process heating. At pressure P3 M2 mass is extracted for process heating. Right. Now pump 2 is handling M1 minus M2 and pump 3 is handling total mass. Here in pump 3 there will be a total mass because you can see M minus M2 is coming in field heat water 1 and M2 is M1 is also coming. Therefore, M1 minus M2 here M1 minus M2 plus M1. This will be the total mass. Right. Sorry, my dear students, pump 2. Pump 2 is handling M minus M1. Pump 2 is handling M minus M1. Let us concentrate here. M minus M1. Because my dear students, from pump 1, M minus M1 minus M2 is coming, and here from M2 is coming. Therefore, M minus M1 will be remaining in pump 2. And again this total M minus M1 is going in field heater water 1 and M1 is also coming from the turbine therefore M1 plus M minus M1 is nothing but M total mass in the pump 3 is M right 
this total mass is again circulated in boiler through boiler where heat is supplied at constant pressure right this is the circulation now let us draw temperature versus entropy diagram for this diagram for this cycle right here we are going to draw temperature versus entropy diagram for this cycle so let me minimize this so that we can draw temperature versus entropy diagram now here i am minimizing this cycle so that we will get sufficient space so if i consider temperature on y axis and entropy on x axis then it is a ts diagram there will be a liquid vapor dome there will be a liquid vapor dome now from here my dear students from 1 to 5 we can say sorry from 1 to 4 turbine exit is 4 last turbine exit is 4 from 1 to 4 there is a turbine expansion so from 1 to 4 there is a turbine expansion reversible adiabatic expansion therefore this is a one condition and this is a four condition right now my dear students from 4 to 5 again there is a field water heater through which mass m minus m1 minus m2 is circulating field water heater is nothing but it is a type of condenser it is a type of condenser right therefore 4 to 5 like this but here mass is m minus m1 minus m2 right 4 to 5 the mass is m minus m1 minus m2 now here 1 to 2 at some pressure at pressure 2 m1 mass is extracted for process heating so let us understand let us say 2 point is somewhere here therefore from 2 to we can say 2 to here 9 there will be a constant pressure heat rejection therefore the process will be like this 2 to 9 the process will be like this constant pressure line 2 to 9 like this this is a 9 point you can see here 2 to 9 is field heat water 1 through which mass m1 is circulating therefore through this field water heater mass m1 is circulating and total mass is entry to the turbine here total mass is at the entry to the turbine means from 1 to 2 total mass is m is circulating therefore from 2 to 3 we can say 2 to 3 in turbine there is mass m minus m1 only let's say 3 point is somewhere here 3 point is somewhere here therefore here mass is m minus m1 right and again at 3 m2 mass is extracted and 3 to 7 there will be a end of this will be 7 therefore 2 3 to here we can say 3 to 7 there will be a constant pressure heat rejection in field water heater 2 which is the condenser only and here mass is m2 here mass is m2 therefore from 3 to 4 the mass circulating is m minus m1 minus m2 therefore 3 to 4 the mass circulating is m minus m1 minus m2 the same mass is passing through field water heater 3 which is nothing but condenser again here there is a pump 1 where there will be a 5 to 6 compression that is pump work 5 to 6 will be the pump like this right here at the exit of field water heater 2 the point is 7 point is 7 therefore this point will be 7 right now here we can say from 5 to 6 there is a pump 5 point is somewhere here so let us mark this 5 point here there is a 5 point and 5 to 6 there is a pump 1 right pump 1 through which mass m minus m1 minus m2 is circulating now 6 to 7 again 6 to 7 it is a constant pressure process now 7 to 7 to 8 pump 2 where m minus m1 mass is circulating this m minus m1 minus m2 plus m2 right therefore from 7 to 8 there will be a pump 2 now now 8 to 9 there will be a constant pressure process now this 8 to 10 here sorry 9 to 10 9 to 10 there will be a pump 3 therefore there will be a compression that is 10 point now 10 to 1 is constant pressure heat supply so let us draw this constant pressure heat supply line 10 to 1 is constant pressure heat supply this is how there are different pumps 5 to 6 is pump 1 7 to 8 is pump 2 and 9 to 10 is pump 3 right now my dear students here there are three condensers condenser is nothing but field water heater field water heater 1 through which m1 mass is extracted field water heater 2 through which m2 mass is extracted and field water heater 3 through which m minus m1 minus m2 mass is circulating now here can you see here the work of turbine now turbine is from 1 to 4 but my dear students from 1 to 2 there is m1 m mass therefore work of turbine is m into h1 minus h2 plus from 2 to 3 there is m minus m1 mass therefore plus m minus m1 into h2 minus h3 plus 
from 3 to 4 there is m minus m1 minus m2 mass therefore plus m minus m1 minus m2 into s3 minus h4 this will be the work of turbine in this case right now again let us understand the work of pump here the work of pump will be now there will be a first pump from 5 to 6 through which m minus m1 minus m2 mass is circulating therefore here m minus m1 minus m2 into h6 minus h5 this is the work of first pump plus second pump from 7 to 8 through which m minus m1 mass is circulating therefore plus m minus m1 h8 minus h7 plus now the last pump that is pump 3 through which total mass is circulating from 9 to 10 9 to 10 total mass therefore plus m h10 minus h9 m h10 minus h9 this will be the work of pump here now my dear students heat supply in this case heat supply will be from 10 to 1 heat supply is from 10 to 1 right therefore heat supply is m h1 minus h10 right this will be the heat supply in this case now what is the efficiency efficiency is nothing but w net net work output divided by heat supply where net work output is nothing but work of turbine minus work of pump divided by heat supply this is how we are calculating efficiency and my dear students in this case for practical reading due cycle as it is a heat recovery process whenever there is a heat is recovered the heat supply is decreasing therefore heat supply is decreasing hence efficiency of cycle is always increasing therefore because of this regeneration cycle efficiency is always increasing and if number of field water heater increases go on increasing the efficiency also goes on increasing and when this number of field water heater becomes infinite then the efficiency becomes equal to Carnot efficiency. Thank you dear students. In next lecture we will start numericals on Rankine cycle.